hey, this is Todd. When we think of D&D, &D, it's going to seem weird because we think about, hey, we're going to do stuff and we're going to roll dice. But this bit of player advice that I'm going to get into is to avoid rolling the dice whenever possible. And I'll get into what that means in a second. I know it's going to seem weird since, hey, we're sitting at the table, we bought dice, we've got these great dice, and all we want to do is we want to roll the dice. So why would you ever want to not roll the dice? Well, the dice are not your friend. And I say that because when you roll the dice... What you're doing is you're creating a situation or you take, you're taking part in a situation if you had no choice in the rolling of those dice with a success and a failure. Whenever you're rolling dice, yes, you have that chance to succeed and potentially, say, if it's in combat, critically succeed. At the same time, you also have that chance and it's going to be a flat 5% chance at minimum, right? Because anytime you roll a 1, that's going to be a failure and that's 5% on a 20-sided die regardless of any of your modifiers or proficiencies or anything. You're always going to have at least a 5% chance of failing. And failing is generally going to be something bad happening and depending on your table and your GM and your style of play, that 1 might actually be worse than a normal failure. Right? It could be, oh, get out the fumble charts, or oh, on a one, something really bad happens because we like to play with extreme fumbles or fails. If you're not rolling dice, and assuming that you're just not asking for impossible things where your GM is just saying, no, try again, that means you're getting stuff done, and you're getting stuff done without a real fail state. Let me give you an example. If you're playing a game, and you're playing in most games in which, say, your home village or town is not somewhere of immediate threats, and you decide to go down from the from the inn where you're staying, go downstairs to the common room, have a meal, grab a quick drink, walk across the street to the provisioners, and get supplies. You're probably not going to be rolling any dice for any of that. Assuming that nothing else is going on, that there's no plots running, right? You're just, your everyday normal state will be that you're going to get that. And the GM's just going to say, okay, yeah, sure. You go downstairs and you spend five silver and you get a breakfast and okay, you go across the street and you get your supplies. Those are all wins. You had these goals you wanted to do, eat breakfast, get supplies, whatever else you have going, and you just knock those all off the list. If you can set up your play to where you're knocking things off your list in that kind of way, where that's so common sense that the GM's going to go, you know, you don't need a roll for that. You can just do it. And you're getting stuff done. And that's really what you want to do in the game, ultimately, right? Is you're trying to get stuff done. You as a character, you as a party, you're trying to get stuff done, whether that's saving a princess or a prince, whether it's preventing a goblin apocalypse from occurring, whether it's just collecting loot. You're trying to get things done. And the minimum amount that you can introduce fail states into that, the best. Better. I'm trying to build stuff working within my wheelhouse, working with all these tools I have on my character sheet to try to get as much as I can get out of the GM before the GM goes, okay, roll dice. Whatever your class you're playing, whatever you're doing is you want to build a case, lay the groundwork for just being able to get things done. I always felt it was a little bit of a failure on my part if I had to roll a die to do something. I'd always kind of step back and go, well, do I really need to roll a die for that, right? Because let me build that case for you, right? If I, so, if say the example was I'm a rogue and I needed to climb and a and to get over, say, up the wall of an old manor house and it was full of ivy and stuff, I would say, okay, let me climb that up. And the GM goes, okay, roll for it. I might say, well, do I have to roll for it because I'm an expert climber? I'm wearing, you know, the spiked. I got spikes on my shoes. I've got claw gloves. It's full of ivy. Do I have to roll for it? I'm not embracing the fact that I roll because I don't want that roll. That roll might mean that I fail. And if that fail, what does that mean for me? If I'm trying to sneak into this manor house and I fail that climb check, does that mean I make noise? That my little stealth entry is prevented? Does it mean that I fall, take potential damage? What does it mean? I don't, I don't want to know. If I can avoid it, I want to avoid it. I want to say, how, how much can I get for free? If I'm playing to my strengths, all the modifiers, all the proficiencies, everything I build are kind of building towards doing these things and doing them well. And if I can build that case, if I've laid that groundwork and I've done everything, and I'm when I'm in that channel and I'm playing in those strengths, I find that most GMs are going to give you a lot. Okay, you're a rogue. Oh, yeah, sure, I get that. You don't need to roll for that. You're, of course, you can climb up a vine-covered wall. It's not a hard climbing surface. And as you told me, right, your backstory was circus climber or mountain climber whatever it is oh and yeah you're right you've got all this gear that's been is exactly for this kind of situation so of course go ahead do it now maybe i have to roll for something else right maybe they say oh well you still have to roll for move quietly right and then i might try to build a separate case well here are all the things that are helping me move quietly because that's the next stage right so the first thing i want to do is i want to try not to roll the dice at all 
what can I get for free? The thing you want to try to get is what can I get for free? The dice are not free because they introduce fails where bad things can happen. Otherwise, you're getting a free success. What can I get for free? And I want to stick to those things I can get for free. If I can establish something that I can get for free, then I want to kind of work that, right? If I can establish with my GM that I'm an excellent climber and, and all this and that, and so I can kind of get some things for free, then I'm going to work that angle. I'm going to try to get that. Let me keep working that freebie. If I can't get the freebie, now it's time to say, well, how much stuff can I get in there to really mitigate now that I have to roll dice? So if when this in the circumstance of, okay, I'm climbing up a vine covered, you know, an ivy covered wall, and now he's saying stealth check, well, what do I have now to try to bolster the fact of my stealth check? And I don't just mean proficiencies. Sure. Oh, I've got plus eight in climbing. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a great climber. Well, yeah, that's, that's fine. But I don't know what the DC is going to be. And again, that doesn't mitigate that critical failure. I want to try to build a case for even if I fail, let me try to minimize that failure. Oh, well, you know, my, uh, my, my claws, they've got some kind of noise dampening. I don't know. I wrapped them in cloth before I started. I'm not using shiny material. Everything is a matte. I painted it a matte, a matte dark color or matte. Maybe I even went and I, 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 I cased the joint. And so I put on kind of greenish camouflage. What other things can I do to try to get so that the GM will say something, which would be the best was, okay, you only fail on a critical one, or it'll be a really low DC because you've got all this stuff in your favor. Great. So I couldn't stop the roll, and part of me feels like, ooh, I wish I could have just not had to roll at all, but now that I have to roll, let me get as much as I can in my corner, make as much of a case as I can, and again, that case is not just resting on what's on my character sheet, it's what can I take out of this environment, what are this situation, what are these things I can do to get as much as possible the dice on my side. The dice are not my friends. 5% of the chance, 5% of the time, no matter what I do, once I roll that dice, it's a possible failure. And again, depending on your cable, could be a critical failure. So they're not my friend. I don't want to roll those dice i would rather just get the success and live without oh like i rolled a 20 maybe i do something amazing if i can just get a flat just ordinary success i will take that every day of the week rather than have the chance between having like a great success if one is even there's a way to have one and then some kind of failure or great failure so my first step is what can i do to avoid rolling the dice and the kind of things i'm talking about as i want to read because i think this is really important is not just what's on my character sheet it's not just sure i can start my case with hey you know my background is this whatever but that's fine that might get you a little bit to start but past that you're gonna have to try to figure out other things you're gonna have to figure out what you can do in the fiction to get your case across right so i said like well i've look i got the clawed gloves that's maybe it even is not something that in the book gives you a bonus but it's something that i can appeal to the gm and say hey i've got these things that i can allow me to grip with claw like things i'm climbing up i'm going to use the ivy to do a lot of the climbing with so they can grip in their good maybe the gm would have said well if it's just brick or stone then what are those claws going to do but i can say hey they can do this that, and the other i've also got the claws or the spikes on my boots to help me out that i can put on right so i'm building this case even if these things if i look in the php maybe they don't exist at all maybe they're just for flavor i want to turn that flavor as much as i can into a i don't want to call it an argument because the idea is not to go all rules lawyersy or try to get in someone's face and say well you need to give me this or that i'm just trying to build a case i'm just trying to how can i support the fact that to give me this Role. And I think if you could approach it like that, if you approach it in the fiction, I think most GMs, certainly I would, are going to want to rock and roll with that. They're, they want to give you that because this shows all the things that we as dungeon masters, that game masters want, which is you're, you're embedding yourself in the fiction. You are, you know, you're engaged in the content. You're trying to use your brain to be clever, right? I think I've mentioned this in other videos, the idea of acting, you know, trying to be clever. This is all about taking that cleverness and making it work for you. So it means the player, I'm saying, hey, I'm being clever. I have equipped myself to climb these walls. I have come, I have checked it out. I'm not just running forward. I've come to the house and I checked it out. And I said, okay, I can see where I need to climb. Let me figure out what I need. I'm going to go get that. Maybe that would even include, hey, can I say the day before that this caper is going to take place? Maybe I can come and check it out. Maybe I can get close to the wall, see where there's some handholds, right? Kind of pre-scout it. Maybe that will help me avoid a roll. And if I can't avoid a roll, now I want to use all this stuff and then maybe more to say, hey, let me let me get that DC as low as I can. Let me get the circumstances all behind me as I can. And even though I've got a plus 12 and all this stuff, well, that still leaves me room for error. And I want to remove that error. If I can't stop myself from having to roll dice, then let me roll dice and have the lowest number I need to bridge possible. Maybe, it's, maybe I can get to where it's only that 5% chance, right? That would be my absolute 
second goal. If my first goal is avoid the dice, my second goal is get it down, get the DC down, and maybe get it to where with everything included with modifiers, whatever, I, it's only the 5% chance. And once I'm at that point, either I've avoided the dice, great, I just succeed, I get to go on, or I've mitigated the dice, done everything I can, then you put, the, you, put your, uh, you put your fate in the dice's hands and you see what you get. But I think the goal for me is not to do that, or to do that the least amount of times possible, because the more I do that, the more chances I have of failing. If I can avoid failing, if I avoid, avoid rolling the dice, if I can just get the GM, explain it to them in the fiction to the point where they'll just give it to me without the dice, and that's what I want to do. I think a lot of people are get enamored with the die rolling, which I get it. It's part of that fun. There's that, that gambler's element to role-playing games where you're rolling the dice. But when you put yourself in the situation where you're rolling tons of dice, you are building up failures. I don't care, again, what your levels of proficiency, all these things you've maxed out, you were 5% chance flat at the end of the day of fumbling at the worst possible time. So next time you're playing and you're thinking about what you can do, your character's capabilities, how you can in bring them into the game, don't just think about, well, hey, I've got good bonuses, so let me just go and roll a bunch of dice and see what happens. Think about, well, what can I do to not roll the dice? Or what how, what, how much can I get away with, right? Make that your kind of game, the game within the game. What can I get away with before dice have to be rolled? Let me see how far I can push it before the GM's going to say, oh, well, for that you need to roll. How far can I get? How many actions can I get down? How many turns can we do what we're doing before we have to roll those dice? Because if we don't have to roll dice, then it, it really, for the most part, it just means we're succeeding. It means we're moving. And by the way, that makes a faster game and you're going to accomplish more when you can just, everyone in their wheelhouse, and again, as the team, you're all in that lane going and each individual in the team is doing the things that are their strengths. If you play to your strengths, you're going to tend to do that. And by the way, in, in OSR style games, this is even really more important because the dice can be particularly brutal, right? Part of what makes things like 10-foot poles such valuable tools is that when used correctly, they they avoid you having to make the rolls of whether you're triggering traps because you're catching the traps, right? You're going down with your 10-foot pole. If there's any trip wires, if there's things, you're catching them. You should always be thinking about how can I mitigate what's going to happen or how can I avoid what's going to happen? And this is true, you know, obviously in combat, you don't have as much of a choice over rolling dice because you're in combat, you're going to be attacking things, you're going to be doing all that. But of course, the mitigation comes in. Can you get yourself in good defensive positions where you don't, have to, where you can at least get bonuses? Or can you stay away from situations where the enemies are going to get bonuses? Mitigate those dice as much as you can and don't be in such a hurry to roll dice. The die rolling will come. Those brand new dice that you've got that you went on Etsy and bought or that you've made yourself or even the cheap Chessex dice that you've got in your cool favorite color that's brand new. You're just itching to just get that new die smell and let them roll. They're, they're going to roll. You're going to get to them. Take your time. See how much you can work, how much you can accomplish before you have to roll the dice and see if you get further. See if you find that whatever metric you want to use, you're more successful than you were before. And then let me know if you do try it. Let me know how it goes. If you do find success with this or you find that it's a waste of your time, either way, let me know in the comments. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe. I'm recording this uh, late night, early morning Memorial Day. So happy Memorial Day, everybody. And I will talk to you later. Thanks.